Could one tiny pill help prevent heart attacks and keep your arteries unclogged? Scientists have been studying aspirin for decades, but there's one secret most people don't know about, and in the next few minutes, I'll break down exactly how aspirin keeps your arteries unclogged, who should and definitely should not be on aspirin, and some of the biggest myths regarding aspirin's side effects. In 1897, Felix Hoffman, a chemist, discovered and created a compound in a lab known as acetyl salicylic acid. Acetyl salicylic acid is a fancy name for aspirin. So aspirin has actually been around for quite some time. Funny enough, when I was in undergrad in our organic chemistry lab, we actually created the acetyl salicylic acid for one of our labs. It's really not that difficult to do. Aspirin has a multitude of effects within the human body, including reduction of pain, reducing fevers, but it also does something else, and that's kind of the point of this video. How does aspirin actually unclog arteries? Well, you can think of arteries within the human body as highways that carry oxygen-rich blood all throughout the tissues that need them. Normally, these highways are four to five lanes wide. Now, if you start to eat ultra-processed foods and don't exercise, there begins to have a buildup of plaque within these arteries. This plaque buildup within the arteries acts as construction and takes the normal five lane highway down to just two lanes. And what happens when you get construction and highways go from five lanes down to two lanes? You get a lot of traffic. Traffic backs all the cars up and it takes you forever to get to where you actually want to go and the oxygen rich blood in the body has a more difficult time going through the highway getting to the tissues that actually need the oxygen in nerdy terms it changes the blood flow from laminar flow to turbulent flow doing this over time this turbulent flow creates micro tears within the arteries which leads to more plaque buildup creating more construction and making it difficult for the blood to get to where it really needs to go. When these micro tears form, it creates little divots on the inside lining of the arteries. And these little divots essentially catch the red blood cells, making them easier to form and clump on top of one another. One of the major culprits in this blood clot forming process is known as platelets. Platelets are little proteins in the body that are largely responsible for helping your blood stop bleeding if you cut yourself, and it helps form this clotting process. Now, obviously, if you're trying to get oxygen-rich blood to certain tissues like the brain and the heart that really need them, you don't want giant blood clots in the middle of the road because then the cars, the blood cells, can't even pass through the highways in order to get to where they want to go and this is known as either a stroke if it happens in the brain or a heart attack if it happens in the heart now where aspirin comes into all of this it helps reduce the activation of those platelets not making them as active and reduces the formation of the blood clots overall so it helps the blood flow naturally through and down the arteries in order to get the oxygen to where it needs to go. This is why aspirin is so crucial and helpful in reducing the risk of heart attacks and strokes. It's not magic, it's just physiology and something I think is so cool being a giant nerd myself. I think if the FDA rediscovered aspirin today, they would probably not make it an over-the-counter medication but make it only available by prescription due to the side effects that we're about to talk about. So aspirin can cause allergic reactions just like pretty much any medication can. It also has an increased risk of stomach ulcers, but the major side effect and the reason that the overall indications of who should and should not be taking aspirin has changed in recent years is due to its increased risk of bleeding particularly in the brain and in the stomach. Now, this seems a little obvious, right? A medication that you take in order to reduce the likelihood of blood clots can form, 
can also induce bleeding because the blood clot formation is not happening. But that's kind of the point. Taking aspirin on a daily basis can increase your risk of deadly life-threatening bleeds in the brain and in the stomach if you're one of those people who are at higher risk. Before 2022, it was recommended that all adults over the age of 50 regardless of medical comorbidities, take a baby aspirin or an 81 milligram aspirin per day. But those recommendations have since reversed to where not even people over the age of 60, unless you have special reasons, should be taking aspirin. And we'll talk about that in a second. Bleeding is no joke, y'all. And the number one thing that we're taught in medicine is first, do no harm. So who should be taking aspirin and who should not be taking aspirin? Now this can get into the weeds a little bit because there are different recommendations based on different guidelines and different institutions, but there's a clear set of people who definitely should be on a baby aspirin. And that's individuals with known strokes or known heart attacks. So if you've ever had a stroke or if you've ever had a stent placed in your heart, you definitely should be on a baby aspirin regardless of your age. Also, those aged 40 to 70 years old with a high probability of having either a stroke or a heart attack should also definitely be on a baby aspirin. There's a certain risk calculator that you should definitely bring up to your primary care physician if you're in that age 40 to 70 window and you've never had a heart attack or a stroke before in order to see if you fit into that window of, hey, taking a baby aspirin would benefit me greatly and reduce my risk of getting a heart attack or stroke in the future. Now, the people that definitely should not be taking aspirin is if you've never had a heart attack or stroke and you're not at an increased risk of getting one from the general population, you should not be on a baby aspirin no matter what your age is. That means even if you're 70, 75, 80 years old, you should not be on a baby aspirin if you don't have those increased risk because aspirin can cause bleeding and the increased risk that you get from bleeding, its side effect can be more dangerous for your health than actually preventing a heart attack or stroke from happening. It's very common, and I see this in practice a lot, of older adults to still be taking a baby aspirin and that used to be what we thought as a medical community was best for patients. But please, if you're taking a baby aspirin, talk with your primary care physician. If you're older than a certain age, I definitely would recommend just getting off it because the risk of having a brain bleed can be substantially higher and life threatening. If you have any more questions concerning aspirin, please drop a comment down below. And if you're watching this video and you're wondering how to make your heart healthier and stronger as you age, I definitely recommend checking out this video right here.